All right, friends, we are going to move on to the Solarian period. So, so far, if you look at our chart, we have made our way all the way down to here. And <clears throat> let's look at what's happening during the Solarian. So if you look at the color line, it's for the Ordovician, it's that consistent kind of turquoise tone. Oh, you weren't up there with me. Here we go. And then we see a shift. It looks like kind of a smaller period of time. Um, it does not look as crowded. So we are still in the age of invertebrates, but instead of the Ordovician, we are now in the Solarian. Or maybe I even bring it here. I wonder if that's better. Here? Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good, okay. The Solarian period. Alrighty, so in the Solarian, so this is also named after a tribe from that area in Wales called the Silurus tribe or something like that, the Silurus, a tribe from Wales. Um, so plants, this is a neat line, look at our plant line. It's all discombobulated, where here are my hands, okay, look at this line. So the plant line is coming down and you see it split into a top line and a bottom line. So something big is happening with plants here. We'll start by talking about that. And so the big change with plants is that, you know, everything that's been on the earth up until this time, they have to adapt to the new conditions. And so plants have come up with something brilliant. And so here's our example of Cooksonia. And this is when plants first began to hold to the bottom of the shallow seas. So we've talked about the parts of a seaweed and how it has a hold fast that holds onto a rock. Um, and these plants began to push up out of the water towards the sunlight. They grew stems which could hold them up straight to the sun. And so we will put that on the line going up. And then who knows what's going to come next because if you look, that line is going to split too. But that is a different period. So don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. So that's what's happening on the plant line. Um, I'm going to move my words up. It helps me follow. So here's the plant area. Um, Prokaryotes. Yes, I'm all set. All right, let's see what's happening with the... Now, this is neat. There's a lot of changes with our corals. And I showed you um, the other day a real horn coral fossil. And let's talk about the corals. So, let's see... So corals, as you already know, are tiny animals that live in groups on the sea floor. And the colonies of corals that live during the Silurian built hard exoskeletons uh, to protect their bodies. The exoskeletons formed huge reefs in the shallow waters. And um, so there were two kinds of corals. Um, Tabulate corals lived in colonies that formed chains. The chains sometimes look like clumps of organ pipes. And so that would be this one. Um, there were more than 300 species of tabulate coral. Then there's the rogos, rugos type of corals that are often called horn corals and they're shaped like the horn of a bull. The animal's tentacles reached out of the top of the cup. Both of these corals are extinct. So that's our coral line there. Excuse me, readjusting. There goes the chapstick. Okay. Okay. And then for mollusks and brachiopods, 
um, just a different looking brachiopod. I don't have too much to say about it. Um, another new kind of trilobite for our trilobite line. And I, I was just re-watching the videos to make sure I'm not repeating myself. I don't remember me saying this, but um, you know, there were so many trilobites on the ocean floor during this period that people have said that this should have been named the age of trilobites. Um, what did I, you, I mean, you have, I think a whole book about trilobites, so I won't say much, but um, they had many legs, they lived on the muddy sea bottoms. Um, they're similar to a horseshoe crab. Some could swim and they were the rulers of the sea for a while. Um, some were about two feet long um, and under their head was a mouth that opened into the stomach. So it ate as it walked along the ocean floor. Okay, so there's our trilobite line. And then, okay, so this is worth pausing to talk about because this guy is super cool. So, <clears throat> a new kind of arthropod is on the earth, the sea scorpion. Now, the other proper name, it's hard to pronounce, Euripterida. So, sea scorpion. So, the Europe, the Euripterids were among the largest and most fearsome marine predators of the Paleozoic. The smallest were just 10 centimeters, but some were as long as six feet. That makes them the largest arthropod that ever lived. They arose in the Ordovician, and the last ones went extinct in the Permian. Most have been found in rocks that were laid down in brackish water or fresh water. The earliest groups may have lived in the sea. Some Euripides, you're, I'm saying it wrong, I'm sure, may have spent at least short interval, intervals on land. Their fossils are known from all continents. And they have such amazingly good preservation that their external structure is the best known of all extinct animals. So here's a nice picture of a sea scorpion fossil. <clears throat> because of their long tails and spine-like appendage at the tip, they have been called sea scorpion. And they are closely related to the sea scorpion. So that's an exciting advancement on our arthropod line. Alrighty, and then our final line for today is the crinoids. Let's see, I'm bumping things around up here. <clears throat> the crinoids. And so it's worth saying that the crinoids, these beautiful sea lilies that they're also known as, um, were just so beautiful. They, um, the bottom of the sea looked like a magical forest um, with beautiful tree-like animals. And their, their trunks were made of calcium that, that they helped clean out of the water. Um, some were very large and there are still sea lilies today. Um, but they're smaller. And the important thing about echinoderms is that they have developed very complicated insides with a special nervous system. Um, I just wanna share a few really nice pictures. I love this book, I love this artist. This book is by Jill Bailey and Tony Seddon. And if we were at school, you would be looking at it so often, but I mean, look at these pages. This is their um, depiction of what the seas would look like. And I'm guessing whoever made my beautiful, well, Jennifer Bevan made my beautiful charts. I wanna give everyone credit who deserves it. And so 
she also made these pictures that I've been showing of what it must have looked like. So you can see that coral that looks like the pipes. And there's our sea scorpion. Um, here's another picture. So this is the Ordovician and the Silurian kind of combined. You can see, is that a trilobite on the floor? And look at those crinoids just swaying in the water. There's a nautiloid among them. You know, fossils don't preserve color, right? When you find a fossil, it looks like the earth tone. So we don't really know what color these 